Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to a new video today. I am doing a collaboration today with Laura. She is a crafty friend of mine that I was able to meet in person this year in Phoenix. And we are both gonna go through our favorite or top 10 must have card making supplies. These are mainly going to be tools that you need to card make. And of course there are alternatives to what we're showing, but we wanna show you what is the best for today's video, I am mainly going to focus on 90% very affordable things that maybe only cost a few dollars that are gonna make the difference in your craft room. But I am going to talk a little bit about the importance of having some tools over others. So let's jump right in. My first tool here is the Misty Stamping Tool. Now in this video, I am not going to be debating about which stamping tool is the best one. That is the one you're going to have to determine is useful for yourself. I have only ever used the Misty and I swear by it ever since I got it. The Misty comes in pink. However, you can get some additional stickers for it. I have mine in white and teal is also available. So what does this do to improve my card making. So I used everything under the sun for stamping. I've used acrylic blocks. I have used a stamp press from Fiskars back when this was not invented yet. And some of my main issues that always happened were when I'd stamp, I either didn't have enough ink on my stamp, maybe I dropped the block, whichever one it was, but this has solved it. So when I had the block, I had issues with, for example, lining things up straight. I had issues with dropping my block because I'm a bit on the clumsy side. I've had issues with not inking up my block, my stamp enough. And then when I go and try and stamp again, I would stamp off center and then it would be ruined. So when I went to the Fiskars stamp press, which I used for years in my videos, that eliminated the problem of dropping it and most of the alignment issues because it gave me time to sort of hover over my spot. So if you've never seen one before, it kind of is like this plastic piece here, but it had four foam feet. So it hovered over your project and then you just push down in the center and it stamped for you. But I still had issues if I needed to re-stamp something, I would still have issues with it now and again. This Misty stamping tool changed everything. For example, you keep everything in the corner. So when you are stamping, you always have your cardstock in the exact same place over and over. So if I were to stamp something and it didn't stamp correctly, I could easily just stamp it again. There are so many techniques that you can do with the Misty, and I'll link to my video where I go over 10 things that you can do with your Misty stamping tool, but I have to say this was a game changer. Now, of course, buying a block versus buying a Misty stamping tool are definitely a big cost difference. This is the only thing in my video I think that might be out of the price reach of, of a few people. This retails here for, I believe, about $60 US. It is available as well on Amazon, and what the best part about that is it's the actual seller of the Misty that sells through Amazon. And yes, it can be a little bit on the expensive side. However, the way I see it is that I use this every single time that I sit down in my craft room to stamp my projects. And therefore, this has per use way more value than any stamp that set or die set that I own. The cost of a Misty is about four standard stamp sets. Yes, it can be a little on the pricey side all at once for some. However, the amount of paper that I've saved, the amount of time I've saved with these, especially making bulk cards and things like that, is well outweighs the cost of the Misty stamping tool itself. So even if I had to squeeze a few pennies here and there to be able to afford something like this, or I had to save up for a long period of time, I cannot recommend this enough. It just improves your accuracy, it improves any frustration you've been having with your stamps, and it just has so many cool things that you can do with it besides just simple stamping. Moving on to the second tool, we'll go into some of the more affordable options, and that is an embossing bag. An embossing bag simply looks like this, and there are ways to make your own if you want. However, since this is about $3 retail, I never really found the point in making a DIY embossing bag. I've had this one forever and it still 
ready to go. So what it does, I don't like the embossing tool. There is a, a embossing tool that is in plastic with a little brush on it, and I don't like it at all. I find that the powder never comes out properly. So what this does, it's just an anti-static pouch. So if I'm going to go emboss, I just rub it over my cardstock, and you can see this powder sort of comes out. All it is is, I believe, cornstarch. And it just takes away all the static and it really improves my game when I am embossing. No straight embossing powder is going to stick to my cardstock when I've prepped my surface beforehand with this simple tool. The next thing that I truly love that I would not live without anymore, even though it took me a while to invest in one of these, is a sandpaper eraser. This here is a really hard eraser and what it does is when you smudge something in your project then you can easily just rub out the area and it sands down your cardstock. So you don't want to rub too hard when you're using it. However, if you have a small smudge or a light smudge, it will take it off super easily. You can also try and take off if you get a spray a straight embossing powder just a little bit. It may take that off as well. Now this has saved me so many cards and if it doesn't work then I just use a creative placement solution so I just stick my sentiment over top of the area that I smudged or an object or whatever. The next thing that I have is a good liquid adhesive. Now I have three recommendations here for you. I have had many people as well recommend to me the Art Glitter Glue. I've never used it before but I hear that it's quite excellent as well. Now these three glues I use kind of interchangeably. There's not, not one of them that I particularly like more. The Tombow Mono I've used probably the longest. I used this one for years and only this one. I decided to try the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive after I was sent one from Tonic and I really love this as well. I think they're quite similar as far as their consistency. And this one here I think is a really good bang for your buck. It's a really nice bottle. And this is Ultra Bond Adhesive from iCraft. This is slightly more liquidy, I find. So if you're using a thin cardstock, then I would recommend these two. However, for the thicknesses that I use at an 80 pound or 110 pound, I have no issues with this. The next one I have is exactly what is seen here. This is my Tim Holtz glass mat that I work on for surfaces. I have an entire review video that I'll link to above in the information panel, as well as in the description below, if you wanna see my complete review. I like it because it is glass, which means it easily cleans up with just a simple spray bottle and a cloth. If I happen to have any sort of pastes or anything that have dried on here, there's a scraper available separately that I could just scrape over top to get any sort of adhesive or anything off of my area. There's also a white area off to the side where you can mix watercolors and since it's white you can see their true color when you're on there. You can smudge ink pads, whatever you like. And there's also a craft mat that comes with it. It's just this small one, I always keep it rolled up, that sticks on here so you can use this as a surface as well if need be. This was an absolute game changer. I love the way it looks. The only thing I have some issues with is filming because the way that I film with an Akron stand, my camera hovers directly over top and the lights reflect and my camera reflects and everything like that. But overall for the average crafter, that will not be an issue. But I definitely have to say that I love working on top of it. It is also raised a little bit on the sides so I don't have to worry about my surface getting cluttered with supplies. My next thing is another extremely affordable option and that is purple tape. So it comes in two sizes. You have this one and a half inch roughly and this half inch and the half inch is new. So I'm really excited about that. And since this came out a year ago, I've gone through, I think four rolls of it already. I use it for everything, for sticking my dies in place, for holding down stencils. I used it for the longest time. I used it to mask. So if I were to be adding ink to a surface or whichever, I could use this for a nice line. And I like the fact that it doesn't tear my cardstock when I lift it up. It's really strong. And I love the both thicknesses because this is perfect for when you're doing something like masking or watercoloring and you really want to protect a larger area where this is really perfect if you want no waste and you're just using it to hold down dies or stencils or whatever the case is. My next thing is a relatively new item in my craft room. So if you've seen before, I've always used these blending brushes. I love 
blending because it's a cheap tool that you could add on and just get more out of your ink pads by getting to add really pretty backgrounds. However, I have been using these brushes. I have the ones from Picket Fence, and I know in my review video, which I'll link to below in the video description, many people had said that they got the same thing on Amazon for a fraction of the price. Now, I'll link to the ones at Picket Fence, the ones that I use, and I'll also link to some from Amazon below. However, the ones from Amazon I have not tested out, and by the sounds of friends that have tested them out, they also get good results with the ones from Amazon, but these ones are definitely a higher quality so it's completely up to you as which option you want. I have some of the larger sized brushes and I have one for each color family. So one for yellows, one for pinks, one for teal, one for blue, one for purple, one for orange, etc., etc. And I really love that these are pretty compact. They fit into a jar, whereas these are even more compact if you just switch out the refills each time. Um, but if you wanna have multiple ones, then I kind of have one for every color. Now I can blend beautifully with both of these options, I just find that I get a little less of a harsh line with these ones and they're easier to use. But both of them I can blend beautifully with. It just took a little more practice with the blending tool. The next thing that I wanted to show you is something that is available in a variety of colors, sizes, and thicknesses, and that's embossing powder. Now for the longest time, I was saying in a previous video, I owned white, clear, silver, and gold. That is all I owned and that worked for me because if you saw in my crafty hack video the other day, you can use any ink, stamp it in whatever color you want and then stamp it again with your embossing ink over top using your misty stamping tool, cover it with some clear embossing powder and you can make any sort of color embossing powder you want because it's actually embossing over top of the color of the stamped image. However, over the years I have invested in a few colors as well. Now, I love Brutus Monroe embossing powder. I also love Ranger embossing powder. And those two brands I probably use the most and probably the most religiously. So as I said, white, clear, silver, gold are perfect. Brutus Monroe has two types of gold. There's gilded gold, which is more of a dull matte, and gilded sparkle, which is absolutely stunning and more of a sparkly gold. And then there's this fairy dust, which is pretty fun as well. And this just goes over top of your stamped image and gives it sort of an iridescent look to it, which I also have been loving to use lately. So it's just something that is affordable that brings your cards to the next level. Speaking of embossing, since I've talked about the embossing bag as well as the embossing powder, I definitely can't say enough good things about my heat tool. This heat tool from Wagner is absolutely fantastic. It melts the embossing powder really quickly. I've tried many different ones before and this one is definitely the one that I would recommend. The only thing that I dislike about it is the fact that there's no protection over the heated top and I have dropped this a couple of times on myself and got myself some pretty bad burns. However, if you're careful, this is a perfect, perfect, perfect heat tool for embossing. My absolute favorite and I don't get as much warping on my paper. Now, the other thing that I really invested in that is a little more on the expensive side is I had, an, I had a machine for embossing before. However, I decided to invest in a Gemini Junior electronic die cutting machine. With the amount of die cutting that I do, this was definitely worth every penny. First of all, it cuts die cuts like butter. Some of the ones that were the most intricate dies that I own that I always had to try and use a shim with or I had to run through the machine multiple times and things like that, I can usually run 99% of my dies through this machine without having even the metal shim in there. It has a really nice even press throughout and I find I'm not cranking that big shot anymore or cranking my die cutting machine because I find it does require quite a bit of strength sometimes depending on the sandwich. I think this one is really amazing. So if you're ever looking to upgrade or if you're investing in an embossing machine for the first time and you don't mind spending a little extra cash, this is definitely going to give you less headaches when you're die cutting. I have owned both the Gemini Junior as well as the regular Gemini. The regular Gemini, it has an eight and a half by 11 inch cutting plate. So a full computer size paper. The Gemini Junior has the standard big shot. I believe it's six by eight and that's good enough for my needs in particular. And I actually didn't really care for the original size one because I just found it too big for what I was doing. However, if I was doing classes and things like that, the regular size one would be perfect. 
One honorable mention, and I just wanted to mention it, but I haven't used it enough yet to verify that this is the best thing in the planet, but I do quite think that I'm going to be using this lots because I use stencils a lot, is Pixie Spray. It's a light tack repositionable adhesive for stencils. You could also use this when using your cards on the back of a turnabout jig from Concord and Ninth, and it'll stick your pet taper dip paper down temporarily. Now I love this because I've used sprays before to stick down my stencils and oftentimes they either leave a residue on the back or they stick and then tear my paper. This just puts my stencils on my paper perfectly so I don't have to have spend all that time taping them down in place. Another thing that I use in my craft room a lot, another honorable mention, is my Distress Sprayer. Now this is a spray bottle and some people might say, okay Justine, get a life. I can use anything like I just use a leftover spray bottle or cleaning bottle or whatever, and that's absolutely true. There wasn't really a particular reason why I thought I should buy this. One thing though that appealed to me was that this locks. And the reason why I find that important is because when I go to crops and things like that, I don't want this leaking in my bag. There we go, now it's locked. And the other thing I love about it is when you are spraying, depending on how quickly you're spraying, this is going to either spray so you get a ton of little droplets or you can spray slowly and you get lots of big droplets and that really versatile makes my ink blending and spritzing very versatile because i'm able to control the size of the droplets so that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed some of the flashbacks to previous videos. Don't forget I have many examples listed below in the video description. I also have Laura's video or Laura's video in the description below if you'd like to check her ideas out on her top 10 supplies. I am hoping we don't overlap too much but I'm quite certain that we will because I think a lot of crafters share the same tips as we do. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I really appreciate everyone watching the collaborations over April, liking and subscribing and commenting to some of my greatest crafty friends and I hope you enjoyed this series all month long. Bye for now.